Sun King by Ryan McMahon. The new book, the new work, will be out in late March, early April 2016. And it's about reality consciousness, unity consciousness, and the nature of the self. It's really about self-awareness. We dive deep into subjects like epistemology, archaeology, astrotheology, theology, history, numerical literacy, math, science, physics, and more. I hope you enjoy this new work. It's a syncretic approach to the self, self-knowledge. I'll read the prologue here, so it'll give you a good idea as to what the tone quality is and where it will take you. Enjoy, Sun King. Sun King, a new project and book by author Ryan McMahon. If the shining golden orb has a name in any culture, he is the sun. The Most High God is always named the sun, regardless of what language the name is spoken in. He is the power source of mankind and the beautiful earth we spring from. When speaking of his creator and sustainer, it is God or goddess of no name. It is the force that is causal still magnetic light. If the shining golden orb has a name in any culture, he is the sun. The shining rays of the sun, the wisest men do not worship him as the cause, for they know that he is not quite the first cause. And the wisest man's worship can reveal the cause of all things, the creator itself and sustainer of all forms in the universe. She, the creator goddess, is causal still magnetic light. And so it is wise for men not to worship the forms of manifestation so that she so creates in the electric male energy known as the sun. Man should not bend his knee to the forms, even with all their beauty and radiance, for they are still temporal. The only thing in the universe that is truly exists and is not temporal is the cause, the still magnetic light, which is pure potential, and all forms spring from the stillness, and all forms dissolve back into it. When we as individual spirits or souls embark from the cause, the stillness, we are activating a deep-seated memory of our own divine origins. However, we tend to lose and forget ourselves through amnesia. We forget who and what we really are. The great spirit, the cause, is still within us always. We descend through the ten rings or sephiroth or planets or chakras. These rings, these systems, create more and more density. They create more and more dimensions until we finally land here on Earth in the third dimension as material physical bodies. Simply because we are crystallized into material bodies, we identify our consciousness with matter. This is a mistake, as we should always remember our divine origin as cause still causal light. When we descend these rings, we become aware of all forms and manifestation being born of electric light. But male electric light is temporal and spatial and not eternal. All electric manifestation expresses itself as oneness divided into two sexes or genders. The gender generates more and more manifestation and beauty. This manifestation, these rings, are likened to the great macrocosm as well as to the tiniest microcosm. The sun moves in an elliptic as well as many other celestial bodies. This elliptic is the waveform undulation of cyclical infinity. The ancients called it the lamiscate, the infinity symbol. The sun moves in the elliptic. Particles, atoms, electrons, protons, and other imaginaries all have their own elliptic, that they are moving around in cycles, and that they also have moving around them in expanding or in contracting cycles. This is exactly why all manifestation keeps moving into infinity. 
This is also why beneath all manifestation is the cause sustaining it. Self presents as some sort of reservoir. It knows. But what is knowing or knowledge? Or what is the difference between the two? I have to say that knowing is better represented by feeling than by thinking or thought. Now, I have to think my way through this, but when I know something, there is some sort of energetic impulse that is felt in my being through and through. This shows that this shows that it's not something that is thought, it is something that is felt. And it must be the self, a reservoir that holds and recognizes this feeling. Now we go further into this dynamic. Where is the mind located? It's not in the brain. If we were to try to locate it, we would have to say it is sensed by the entire body or being. And this marks the point that mind is actually the interface between the body and higher consciousness. But I guess we can say the spiritual self, which is reality, the self that knows. The self knows its own center or origin in the universe. Now we get lost by often falling away from, from the center. Most often it is our society and culture that causes us to lose the feeling of center. We could call this the construct. Some people call it the matrix, but what it really is is a collective agreed upon version of reality. And it is not true reality because it is fueled by every person's fears, anxieties, misconceptions and confusions as well as fueled by all of our positive traits. It's a bit like the self is submerged in some large stew, an agreed upon description of reality. So it's each individual's divine right, and I would say duty, to use the imagination and creativity that the self is involved with. This creates awareness, gives each individual self the opportunity to create the dream. And here, is a key point. Our construct or society has told us that our sleep and our waking life are different and that our sleep is of no importance. It's just a useless fantasy or myth. But I have to say this is totally incorrect. Once the self becomes centered, it remembers and realizes its divine place in the cosmos. And it realizes that consciousness is not asleep what this means is that the dream world is just as valid and real as what we would call the waking world. If it were not fundamental, then why do we all do it? We all breathe, we all dream. When the self realizes this, its relationship to itself, the subject-object relationship, nucleates or dissolves or balances. This awareness of balance is transcendence. If you want to use a scientific term, we would say we nucleate our own opposites because we are our own observer. J. Krishnamurti said it like this, the observer and the observed are the same thing, they are one. When the self realizes this, reality occurs. We nucleate our own opposites and the construct dissolves away or falls apart. Knowing and knowledge are a bit different. Knowledge is an objective accumulation or residue of a thing, but not the thing itself. And so knowing is not information about a thing. It is a feeling or resonance of the thing itself. The knowing arises by intimate energetic exchange with the thing. In this case, the self realizes its own divinity and divine nature. So once the sinner self realizes its own divine nature and power, if it falls away from the center, it is due to some form of consent. People consent to their own enslavement because they are afraid to be responsible for themselves and to create their own reality, which is our divine right and duty. Sovereignty is the actual design and makeup of the self, the reservoir. It is untouched by others. There is nothing that another person can do to destroy oneself. However, People will tell you otherwise, and when they do, they are asking you to consent to your own destruction. The enslavers simply want to control your consciousness for their own personal use. But of course, 
the self is sovereign, and it is everyone's duty to their highest knowing of self, the most authentic self, to transcend the construct, which is the programming that society and culture has given to you. Consider your own true divine right to outshine the construct, the current paradigm. Feel that expanse and think freely.